Good morning, and thank you for joining us today, either here at the church or online. Pastor Herb is out of town, uh, but he has helped arrange what I am sure will be a great service, and I know hopefully everyone is going to be blessed today. So I'm going to open us with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I just want to lift this time to you, Lord, and just lift this service and just ask that we all be blessed and we just be ready to hear your words, Lord, and just be encouraged through this day. For in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, let me welcome you guys all out this morning, and um, we're going to sing together, Come Behold the Wondrous Mysteries, if you can stand with us as we sing this song. Thanks. father that we all have in common, the father that has um, chosen to adopt us, that we are now sons and daughters of the greatest father of all time, and he is a good father, and we all have a part of his great inheritance for us in heaven. So we're going to sing, God is so good.
you guys singing the Turkish. I'm very impressed with that. Um, but that was just a warm up uh, for our next song um, that is entirely in Turkish. Um, this is a very common song that we love singing in our church um, in Ankara, Turkey. It's called Achikapa, which means open door church, that we want to be an open door for our Turkish community there. In this song, um, it actually translates to Father, I adore you. Again, talking about our Heavenly Father, that um, he is always there um, to welcome us in. <laughs> today. Um, I am privileged to bring you an update from our friend Marek, um, who left us on Thursday to go back home to Slovakia. He made it safely home, um, and he sent me a couple of photos and videos of uh, surprising his family. Um, his mom said uh, he almost gave her a heart attack. <laughs> so, but he is back home with his friends and family now, and he sent me an update today that I'm going to read um, with a photo. He said, big God story. Um, and he sent me a picture of a girl in uh, his church getting baptized. This is a girl that I spoke to, and God talked to her through me. She gave her heart to Christ, and today she's being baptized. And so he got to see that on his first Sunday home. And what a huge affirmation for him in a tough time of transition. Um, so please pray for him, as the reverse culture shock is sure to hit. That's oftentimes harder than the initial culture shock of moving to a foreign country. Um, and then I have another update from, this is from the IMB newsletter that they put out. Um, this is from actually last week, Saturday. It says, one effective tool for connecting with non-believers in the Czech Republic is English, which is particularly effective when used in conjunction with summer camps. Pray for the upcoming camps preparation and for the volunteers who will come to help with them. Ask the Lord to grant unity of vision, understanding of culture, and especially that he would already be opening hearts and minds to him to know him over the course of this summer. Intercede that the relationships created would last into the next year as discipleship and growth takes place. And so with that, I am privileged to, uh, to announce that our church is preparing to send out a team, as you know, we have for almost 20 years now, but the pandemic put the hold for the last three summers. And uh, so this year, um, Brother Lenny, um, Rhonda, um, we have Dave and Megan Line, we have Dave, Teresa, Ben and Hannah Marcus, um, myself, and then for week two, Rachel Arp will be joining us as well. 
We are going to be heading out in just under a month um, for two weeks of Czech English camp. The first week will be familiar to us who have gone before and to those of you who have gone before. I see a couple in the audience who have been. Um, week two will be a little bit different. It is a family camp with quite possibly a whole new group of, of kids and campers. Um, so please pray for the hearts of the people that will be coming, uh, the campers, the, the parents, um, the Czech nationals who will be leading the camp, the Czech missionaries on the field who we partner with, and then our team from Memorial as we prepare to go. Um, I believe we are on day six of our spir spiritual preparation um, today. And so just pray for us as we get our hearts and minds ready to share. And then I would like to ask special prayers for myself, um, as when I travel over to the Czech Republic for the English camp, I will be staying there. I will not be coming home um, after the two weeks of camp. Um, I am going over to be a team associate with the IMB, which is a two-year commitment to start um, volunteer um, working with a local church in the city of Plzeň. And um, for those of you who I've talked to a little bit, you know some of the details about it. Um, I'll be leading five separate youth groups of five separate churches in the area. I'm trying to get them all together. Um, and there, with the Ukraine crisis, there is a huge opportunity for some refugee work, both in the Czech Republic and in surrounding countries, including Ukraine. So pray for me as I prepare to go, as I have a lot to do here um, financially, getting money um, in order, um, asking for donations. If you would like to, if God is calling you to donate, please come see me on uh, how to do that. We're giving through the church 100%. Um, and then just pray that everything else will fall into place, ending my lease, selling my car, um, saying goodbyes to friends and family here. And... Uh, Pray for a year, two years of God's blessing and ministry. And uh, so if you now um, come together, and we'll join in prayer. Father, I just thank you so much for today. I thank you that we can worship together in your house, um, that we can hear about what you're doing across the world, that we can sing these songs in Turkish today and uh, be reminded that you are the same God in Turkey as you are here. Lord, as we remember our brother, Marek, who is home in Slovakia, knowing that you are the same God in Slovakia, working miracles, saving lives, saving souls, um, as you are here. And Father, as we focus on Czech Republic for the next, next month or so, um, with preparation for English camp, and then as I prepare to go. And God, I just thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you are the same here in America, and you are the same across the world. And Father, be with the missionaries on the field, be with those who are preparing to go, be with those who are home right now as they have been serving uh, for quite some time. And uh, Father, we just give this all over to you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to um, sing, speak, O Lord. <laughs>
Good morning again. It's uh, my opportunity and pleasure to introduce, uh, although all of you know them, Dave and Denise Harkness and Jim and Nicole Burna. Yeah, we can all clap for them. Uh, we're all family here. We're, we're just all here to encourage, and we're we're all going to be encouraged. And and it's going to be it's an interesting moment for me because I'm going to introduce uh, inter I'm introducing them. But uh, Dave and Denise and Nicole were all friends with my kids as they were all younger. Especially David. Denise hasn't gotten older, but Dave has. So, uh, but it's you know it's been an interesting journey for them as parents and. Uh, I'm looking forward to hear what these uh, got, what they would like to share, and uh, you know, these past few years, it's been a real enc encouragement for me, and I know for everyone, to just see how they've grown as Christians here in the church, and we're just looking forward to today. So I'm going to say a prayer, and then allow them to come up. Most gracious heavenly Father, I just want to lift Dave and Denise and Jim and Nicole up to you today, Lord, and just. Uh, encourage them and just open our hearts so we can hear the words that they have to share and and what you have for us as the church to be blessed today lord for in jesus name we pray amen good morning everybody David's really nervous because I didn't write anything down. <laughs> but we're talking about our kids and being parents, and we, are, we know. <laughs> so um, we would like to start off with a verse that most of you know. And a lot of you know our story. Some of you don't. Um, already? <laughs> um, so David's going to read the verse, and um, then I will talk some more. So pretty popular verse. Uh, but first, I just want to say happy Father's Day to all your fathers out there, and especially my dad, who has always been there for me, uh, took care of us in tough times, and raised me to be the man that I am today, and the father that I am today. Thank you, Dad. Alright, uh, the verse that we have is very familiar, Jeremiah 29.11. Our kids love it, and Denise loves it. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So God has a plan, and then we have a plan. So our parenting plan started off 20 years ago. Um, we, we've been together like 100, so <laughs> 20 years ago, um, <laughs> Uh, I, we were pregnant, and um, our journey started rough right off the off the start. We um, I had some situations going on where we had to go in and keep getting checked. And at one point, they um, very early on didn't see a heartbeat, and I was scheduled for a DNC just to the, what was supposed to happen. And when we got there that day, the doctor said, "I really don't think that this is." I, she didn't feel right about it. We, of course, didn't know. We didn't know nothing. We were first parents. And um, she's like, we're not going to do this today. So I went in um, probably a couple days later or whatever, and um, they did another ultrasound, and there was a heartbeat again. Well, this, it, we had another hiccup not that much longer, but then again, everything worked out. So we went for nine, nine months, all ready, and... I was two days late. I was sitting downstairs. I couldn't sleep upstairs anymore. I was downstairs in a chair, and every morning for a little while, David would call downstairs when he got up, are you okay? And I'd be like, yeah. Well, this morning I said, nope. <laughs> I had been probably contracting for a couple hours, but, and uh, so we, we ended up going, um, well, I got in the shower. David called my mom, and she's screaming because I'm in the shower. She wanted me to go straight to the hospital. So we, um, we went there, and my labor was, went on for a while. Um, I couldn't, eventually could not push him out. So they ended up doing a C-section, which um, we weren't prepared for either. So when we, we went and had the C-section, and he was born, 
and everything was okay. But then everything wasn't okay. So a few hours later, um, he wasn't breathing right. Something was wrong. So they ended up sending him downtown to Henry Ford Hospital. Um, <clears throat> David went with him. I, st I stayed at 19 and Garfield Hospital, which was St. Joe's back then. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah. Stop yeah. <laughs> so what ended up happening is uh, our son had got an infection after he was born. And like she said, I spent the whole time with them and they were doing everything they possibly can for him. And after uh, Henry Ford couldn't do anything more, they sent him down to Children's Hospital. And before, before they sent him though, they sent for me. I was lights and sirens from 19 Garfield to the Lodge and West Grand Boulevard, 94. Just had a C-section, bumpiest ride in the entire world. <laughs> But when, when we got there, when I got there, we, I rolled in on a stretcher. The hallway was lined with everybody. Back then we were very much involved in um, everything here, our youth group, our, our age group. Well, we were the oldest, but we were still called young adults, but we were the, we were the oldest. Um, just lined the hallways. When, and it was just showed that God's love was right there. He was right there with us. And um, I got to see him for a minute. I didn't get to go in there, but I got to see him. And then they, they ended up taking him away to Children's. And a couple hours later, David came back and he had passed away there. Um, but the amount of people surrounding us was unbelievable from that moment on and still today, that he, God was right there, right there with every single person in, in our lives. Our church family was just as important as our regular, our, our regular, our family. Um, and when we finally, when I finally did get to hold him, I, I looked at him and I said, I looked at David and I'm like, we have to make another one of these. And um, he looked at me like, I ain't doing this again. Because his last 24 hours and my 24 hours were a little different because he wasn't, I wasn't there. And um, he, he was already in his head like, nope, that's it. <laughs> um, but God was so much there from... Uh, uh, way before um, anything of this happened, when we had him, when we got to the hospital, the people around us after all the things that had to happen right away after, obviously I couldn't do any of it. I don't know who was with him, but I assume Herb and whoever else from the church was with David every step of the way of all the little details that just had to have, it, have to happen. Our parents, both, both of our parents, they took care of everything. And... Um, we were surrounded by so much love that it, at first, you know, of course we were devastated, but it was just, you almost felt like you were just, there was so much love around us that we, that's why I looked at him like, all right, we'll just do this again, you know? And it was just, I don't know if my brain hasn't, it didn't really process it yet, but I'm like, all right. And so we went on for, did all the, all that we went through all the funeral the church was amazing the family was amazing we got to after that everything had settled we were supposed to wait to try to have more kids we waited a little bit well that September um, we were it was Labor Day weekend and we were pulling up carpet and we had a cat and pregnant people aren't supposed to be by cat pee so I'm like, I don't, I feel weird. So I went upstairs and took a pregnancy test. I called downstairs. I said, I'm not pulling up any more carpet, you know, carpet. <laughs> and I, I, was, I was pregnant again, which brought on a whole nother set of worries because we obviously don't know. We never really did. He did get an infection, but we really don't know what happened. 
And um, so we end up, we were pregnant. So we switched doctors and all this kind of stuff. She knew our story. She says, let's go in for an ultrasound just to make you feel better. I said, okay. So I was like eight weeks pregnant. So I go into the ultrasound place. The lady's doing the thing. She goes, I'll be right back. I have to get the doctor. She doesn't know our story. So I, we look at each other and that was it. I was like, what is going on? What happened? You know? So the doctor comes in and they're, you know, he's looking around and he's like, um, have you been counting? And we're like, counting what? <laughs> so there's, there's more than one baby in there. We ended up being pregnant with twins, which was a miracle. It was almost, you know, like people were saying, oh, you know, God gave you one and another one. Yep, that was great, but it was twins. It was two, ba <laughs> two babies. So we, it was just another reflection of, of God being there with us. He, he, we needed, we needed that. We needed it. It was a wonderful blessing and the, the, the um, response after that, remember we had hundreds of people around us. Well, those hundreds of people were excited about these two babies. I don't even think, I had close, I don't think they wore anything twice. We had so much around us that they were around us and God was around us just letting us know everything's going to be okay. And it was, Emma and Zachary were born a month early. They were very huge. So a month early was scary first, but they were huge. Emma, my skinniest child in the house is was eight pounds as a twin and Zachary our six foot three marine is now he was only six he looked like a little bird he was only six and a half pounds and when they when they were born um, we just did the c-section right off the bat we didn't even try the regular way and um, David has a story where Zachary screamed Zachary screamed from the moment he came out he was hungry he's still hungry He's still hungry. And Emma just laid there like she was sleeping, which scared David because that's kind of how Josh was when he first came out. And um, just the, it was just the right doctor and the right people and the right everything just to make us feel comfortable and knowing that what we had been through. But God put those people in our, in our path. And the, the, the whole, the Jeremiah 29, 11 is God has a plan for you. Well, you have to believe that the, whatever did happen with Josh, there was a reason. We don't, we may never know the actual reason, but it could have touched someone at that hospital that day. It could have touched that doctor. It could have changed someone's life somewhere that we will never maybe know. And we have to you have to believe that if you do, if you I have a hard time trying to explain things to people like my favorite saying is everything happens for a reason which we found out last night is not technically in the Bible um, but I have a tattoo on my arm that says it which my mom was really mad about and I was 39 years old but she I when people ask me about it my first response is everything happens for a reason because God has a plan so I just, my arm's not that long to write all that. So I always respond with God had a, has a plan. And so we had a boy and a girl twin, wonderful, square little family, sold all our stuff. Then God said, nah, I missed a very important time of the month. I refused to take a test for two weeks. I finally took the test. I'm pregnant again. I threw the test at David and said, look what you did. But it was the amazing blessing, which is now our Rebecca. <laughs> and she, is, she has been an amazing blessing. She's kind of just what I needed, because as soon as the twins went to kindergarten, Rebecca was born. So it, God had a plan for us that started off really, really bumpy and ended up amazing and there's a million things that happened in between as parents we have such a responsibility to show them everything that they're supposed to do and 
be everything that there's they need and it's hard it's hard because you we were very 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 much involved in church and our kids were and then as they grow up they have to make their own decisions and we just hope that we've instilled enough in them that they know they know where they came from they know why they're here they know who ultimately is in charge of their lives and I would hope that they understand that everything does happen for a reason it's because God has a reason and you can't always know where why why he has his reason we're not supposed to know you know you tell him you, you make plans and he's like mm-hmm and we found out with Rebecca our plan changed again but for amazing I mean I wouldn't know what to do without her She's actually, you know, something else. <laughs> we just say, she's a lot like me. That's all I have to say. I think it was the first four years we spent alone together. So, um, but do you have anything to say or do you want to jump in? Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, so, you know, she was right in line with uh, everything that happened with Joshua. Yeah, I, I did spend, uh, you know, Joshua lived for 24 hours. And, uh, you know, it was a very tough time for us, but God did show himself in many ways uh, through the people, through the church. Um, and if it wasn't for that, I don't know where we would have been afterwards. You know, it's so hard to deal with that loss of a child. Um, and she was right. Afterwards, I said, there is no way I could risk that again. I can't. I couldn't imagine losing another child, but God's plan was different for us. He gave us the responsibility and gave us our kids, and we did the best that we could to raise them up in the way that he wanted us to raise them up. So, and that's what our, we're going to end with our verse, another verse here. And this one is from Proverbs 20, sorry, Proverbs 22, Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I would like to think that, you know, all three of our kids have been baptized. They know Jesus as a personal Savior. And we still pray each day for our kids. You know, even as our, our son is in the Marines, you know, and he's, um, of course, getting a different culture now, being in the Marines. You know, we pray that he will stay on the right path. But we also pray for that for, our, for Rebecca and Emma as well. Do you have anything else? Hmm? Do you have anything else? No, I'm sorry. I was but, you know, distracted thinking yeah, of the kids. But, you know, we, we do, <laughs> we thank this church. We do thank this church because this church family has been behind us the whole time and has helped us in raising our kids as well. And we thank you guys for that, too. I think that's it. That's it? Yeah. Okay. So, thank you, everybody. And those of you that know our story you and all of you you know what part you played in our our little adventure but again you know God has a plan and you just have to trust it you can't it and it's not it is way easier to say believe me I know there are days where it's like why I still 20 years later think why I look at them and wonder what he would look like or what he would sound like or and then there's days I'm like oh my gosh we could have two Zachary's <laughs> so I mean it's you know there was there was definitely a plan that wasn't ours that we just have to follow and trust in so and we always say Zachary's like my father too so <laughs> <laughs> I was teasing my dad I was going to talk about him today he was not happy about it but yeah, ultimately, as far as parenting, which I think was what we were supposed to talk about, um, we had great examples, both 
of our sets of parents in, in their own way um, were wonderful examples for us and we couldn't ask for a better examples and um, it really, really definitely was a blessing for sure. So happy Father's Day and Mother's Day and Parent Day <laughs> and all that. <laughs> We have uh, four beautiful, healthy uh, children, and uh, we didn't prepare no verse or anything, so sorry. But we do know that God is amazing, and he has done great things in our lives. Um, well, I have been begging Jim to have a fifth child for, like, many years, and he was like, no, 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 we're not having one. Well, he finally, he finally gave in. And uh, <laughs> and we got we got Joshua, and from the beginning I felt like something just wasn't right. I was I was always really excited to go to the uh, to my appointments because I knew I was going to be able to hear the heartbeat when I went, and uh, so that always it gave me a reassurance like, oh he's he's okay he's in there I hear the heartbeat. Well, at uh, at my 25 week appointment it was confirmed. Uh, that Joshua was diagnosed with um, hypoplastic left heart syndrome, uh, which is where only half of his heart uh, formed. So the left half did not form. It was not going to get any blood uh, to supply through his body. Um, that was very sad news to hear. This is, um, it is a fatal uh, disease or um, not a disease, but a defect. Um, so, but I, ha I did have a piece. I was able to have a piece um, that everything was gonna be okay. Um, Jim had a piece of healing. Um, I had a piece of healing too. It was just a little different than his piece. Um, but I knew everything was gonna be okay. Uh, he came out and he had his sur first surgery, open heart surgery at nine days old. And um, the surgery went better than expected when words of the surgeon when he came out. He said surgery went better than expected. He came out about two to three hours earlier uh, than we expected. And he came out with, they were able to close his chest uh, which put him about two days ahead of recovery. Um, well, before his surgery, he had some some uh, downs. Like, he was doing really good. He ended up getting put on a, a ventilator, which was really scary. It's scary to have to watch your child go through hospital things, you know. It, it was very scary. Even to put an IV in his arm uh, brought me to tears. I mean, I've never experienced hospital life like with myself I just went in the hospital to have babies and came home like I've never really known anyone in the hospital it was all new but the whole time like God was with us and you you could feel his presence uh, with us that everything's gonna be okay I you know God was true to his his promise and his word uh, but the feelings Joshua came home eight days early from the hospital than expected. Um, and he's been great. The nurses call him a rock star. He's uh, gotten off his feeding tube, which is, uh, I guess, not common for his age with his condition. So God has just brought healing to him. He doesn't have a full heart, but he does have healing through God because his surgery was successful. He is ahead of the game with, with his defect um, compared to the doctor's outlook. Um, My with, turn. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, yeah, I was praying for healing, and well, oh, that's loud. <laughs> so yeah, but in the mean, while I was praying for healing, I'm like, well, 
I started getting to the point like, well, if he's 100% healed with no problems, he probably went home with the Lord. So then I started praying with, can he have a long life with us is what I'd rather see than him being completely healed. And so that sort of changed my pr prayers a little bit. And but then, you know, while I was praying that I got a promise I felt like I promised that he'll be with you guys and he'll be OK. So when she was given, you know, in birth with her in labor with them, all I could think of is God's promise, God's promise. So that's why we named him Joshua. So the first like miracle that happened is <clears throat> the nurse left the room and later on, cause later on she told me that she left the room and she was going to come back about an hour later, but she said she was walking by the room and she's like, I felt like I forgot something there. Well, when she came in, she's like, I'm, well, she comes in, I'm, I'm like, Nicole, what, what's, why are you screaming? <laughs> well, of course she's in labor, but okay. So she's like, he's out. And the nurse is like, what'd she say? I was like, she said he's, he's out. And so she's like, yeah, right, you know, if he's out, open your legs. Well, she opens her, her legs and he's laying on the bed. I'm like, I look like a squirrel trying to cross the road. I'm like, what do I do? I'm, he's not making no noise. So I'm like almost thinking maybe he's dead while he coughed. She's like. Oh wow, he cleaned his own lungs out and so she didn't they didn't even need to do anything. He came out. So yeah, then we went back, you know, did all our stuff. They had to put IVs in him and stuff through his umbilical cord so he can get his medication. So cuz so part of his heart didn't close up. You know, cuz when you're a baby, you got a part that I don't know, goes through and so then we're back, you know, we go to the ICU and we stay there for a little bit and we had ups and downs yeah when they put the ventilator in i just look at him and he's like help me and i'm like i wish i could i could. right now if i help you i'll look like a bull in a china shop you know i'm just gonna make things so much worse and all i could tell him is god loves you i can't you know i couldn't do nothing for him and it was you know and then but you know and then i got a family at home i'm like how am i gonna manage this stuff i gotta go home and i just i couldn't even leave his side and Nicole's like, well, you know, there's dinners for like the next couple of weeks. I'm like, I don't even have to go home. That was, I, thank you guys for the dinners. That was so much. That was a blessing. And uh, so, yeah, and that, I mean, where was I at? <laughs> I guess I should have wrote stuff down. <laughs> and, and, you know, and then, yeah, and then, so as, as it went, went by, you know, he still had the ventilator in. We were ready for the surgery. We're like, you know, I can't wait to he gets this out. You know, he didn't like it. We seen him turn blue like once. We thought, we're like, this is the end, you know, and it, it's, like I said, it's, you want to help him, but I, I could, personally couldn't do nothing for him. And I feel like as a father, you're supposed to, you, you protect your kids. And I couldn't even protect them. I couldn't do nothing. So it was like, it was all, here, God, it's all you. I can't do anything. And my mom's like, if it was me, I'd be freaking out. I'm like, okay, we're freaking out. Now what? Now what are we going to do? <laughs> so it's, I'm like, it's all in God's hands. And, um, yeah, when they they came to get him, they're like, we're going to take him to surgery. He's in good hands now. I'm like, are you guys sure? You know, it's it was so hard to just let him go and know that they're going to cut his chest open and redo his heart and everything. And it was, it was like... I, that was that was one of the hardest things, and I'm like, okay, you know what? I gotta have faith in God. God, ha it's I, it's in God's hands. I mean, even even if he didn't make it, I, I was blessed to have him for the days I had him. And you know, people in my family that don't even believe in God were praying. I'm like looking at him, like, who are you? How did you manage this? I've argued with these people for years, and and you you're born for a couple days, and you got people praying that I couldn't. So, I mean, he was just, it was a blessing. And, I mean, I really realized how much I took for granted all the other kids. I'm like, all my other kids were healthy. I realized how I took it for granted. And, and you guys being there, I felt so bad for everybody else. I'm like, no, I don't know if, who else has this support group that we have. We got dinners coming. We got, I mean, it was, it was it's such a blessing. I, I mean, for such a bad problem it was like light the whole time i was in sun, instead of being in the cloud and in the darkness i was in, in in light and god was just there and around it was it was amazing
And that's about all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Joshua does, he, he does appreciate your prayers, and I uh, would appreciate if you would still pray, because he do, does still have more surgeries to come in his future. Uh, he's expected to have two more open heart surgeries, um, which we're hoping is all that he will need um, as far as any complications or anything. Uh, we're just hoping that he continues being, being the rock star that the nurses call him as he is because he is doing so well. And I know it's um, through the prayers and through God that um, he's able to continue going strong. And we appreciate you all. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Dave and Denise and Jim and Nicole for sharing, you know, a very personal time. But, you know, one thing uh, I hope you heard in both of what they were talking about, and they were talking about their church family being with them, walking through them, in, you know, in good and bad times, you know. And that's what it is, you know, the church. And that's us as a group. We are church family, and we support each other, and, and we walk with each other. And uh, there is one verse, I wasn't, you know, I kept going back and forth about sharing it, but I wanted to share, and uh, I think it's uh, appropriate. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. You know, and, and to me, as a parent, if you're going to learn anything, you're going to learn to pray. You know, and I've learned to pray a lot. My kids don't live close by. My grandkids don't. But I know I can pray for my family every day. And I'm blessed to have that opportunity. And a God that I know hears my prayers. So. But, I, you know, in a moment the praise team is going to be coming back up to lead us in a song of invitation. If you have something you'd like to pray about, I'll be down front here to pray with you. If you or if you'd like to make a decision, you know, personal decision to accept the Lord your life uh, or share that or you just want to rededicate or renew your own walk in the Lord we'll be here to to do that with you so. can join us in singing what a friend we have in Jesus and you can stand as we sing the song about giving um, all of our griefs, all of our pains to God in prayer. <laughs> <laughs> 